So the BBC finally want to encourage people to blow the whistle when they see something wrong at the corporation. I'll believe it when I see it. Hi, it's me again, and the BBC have released a 10-point plan that will deliver progress on impartiality and some other matters. And in there, it mentions whistleblowing, because we all know the BBC have, uh, shall we say, a bit of an issue with it. I mean, look at the Martin Bashir thing, when the guy that made, or was made to make, the fake bank statements and that, that were instrumental in getting the interview with Princess Diana, he tried to blow the whistle. Sacked off from the BBC, told he'll never work there again, and he's now been paid compensation. One of the other people that worked on the show has recently been paid some compensation as well, although not as much as the other guy, but none of my business, for trying to blow the whistle and couldn't, and he lost his job and was ostracised from the BBC for it. Also, something is endemically wrong within the BBC, isn't it? It's the same thing with Savile. How many stories have we heard of people who tried to raise concerns with upper management about Savile and no one listened, they just blew it off because that's the culture within the BBC. Well, it looks like it looks like they want to deal with it, so let's have a little look, shall we? That's quite a long document. It's the BBC whistleblowing policy issued the 1st of July 2022. I'm not going to read it all because it is quite long. How many pages it is? 12 pages, I'm not going to read it all to you. But if you do want to read it, I will put a link in the description below. I always put a link to stuff like this in the description so you can crack on and and have a full read of it yourself if you need cheering up, because I would imagine a lot of it is quite funny when we know the BBC, don't we? So it's gonna be nonsense. So let's pick out a few choice parts, shall we? What is whistleblowing? Whistleblowing under this policy means the disclosure by an individual of information which they believe shows malpractice. This would include misconduct, such as criminal offences, other breaches of the law and serious editorial malpractice or other breaches of professional standards, blah, blah, blah. So it seems they think whistleblowing means the same that we think it means, which is good for the BBC. Yeah, rare, rare. Who can use this policy? The BBC encourages an open culture, so the policy is for anyone working for or with the BBC. The main BBC employees globally, casual staff, temporaries, freelancers, trainees, home workers, contributors. So yeah, it looks like the BBC are rolling it out to everybody to be able to air any concerns they may have. And good for the BBC, credit where it's due, right? But they were always able to. When people saw something wrong at the BBC, they were always able to raise it. Who did they raise it with? Their direct line manager, who didn't want to pass it on. That's the part they've got to deal with. People inherently want to do the right thing and speak up when they see something wrong. But when they do, they're poo-pooed or they're sacked off or they're just completely dismissed their claim whatsoever because upper management don't want to pass it all the way up the chain. What are they doing about that? That's the problem, isn't it? The BBC's assurances to you. The Director General and the senior leadership team are committed to the principles of this policy. You can be assured that the BBC will take steps to ensure you will not suffer unfair treatment or victimisation in your work or at the BBC if you raise an honestly held concern. To this end, the BBC commits to take practical measures to protect the identity of the whistleblower, e.g. not to disclose their identity without consent. But how are they going to do that? If you've spoken to your manager that you've seen something wrong, he knows your identity. And if you were... There's only three people working on the team. There's a fair chance they got, the other two are going to know who did it, right? Who grasped them up? No, I don't see it. I don't see how they can possibly, how they can possibly protect whistleblowers. I don't see it. And then if you grasp the manager up for something, he's done wrong, rightly so. But he keeps his job, just gets a disciplinary procedure or whatnot. I'm not going to look favourably upon you anymore, yeah, even though he's so completely impartial and they did the right thing by blowing the whistle on me. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. If you have a concern about malpractice, it is hoped that you will feel able to raise it with your first line manager, a more senior manager, or your HR business partner. This may be done orally or in writing. If you raise a concern in writing, please provide details of how you can be contacted so that we know who you are. If your concern arises in an editorial context, you may also raise your concern with a senior editorial figure who is not your line manager? As I said there, you know, you're gonna be victimized. You're gonna be victimized. It's got to be completely anonymous. 
they need an anonymous web page or something on their internal intranet system where you can do this and not be tracked at all so they don't know who you are and everything that comes through there must be properly investigated or it's not it's not going to work it's just not going to work there are other ways to raise your concern in confidence through the bbc's internal whistleblowing reporting routes so yeah we can do that i look i've got a full address there as well for who you can contact and now i don't need to contact them and then navex is what an anonymous global thing yeah, I don't get it. I mean, if you've got to email this Balram bloke, you can use a burner email, I guess, but they're going to want to reply and get more details. You know they are. A, oh, you can do a web-based report. Look, there we go. So maybe maybe I should have read ahead, hey? Yeah, but you've got to look at the history of the BBC to believe that I don't think it's going to change anything because the way the BBC works is just ingrained into them. We've said before, the only way to fix the BBC is to close it down and start again from scratch, isn't it? I mean, how many reports have I got here of just whistleblowers that have been stitched up? The BBC pays significant sum to Panorama whistleblower who was sacked and defamed after revealing how Bashir done his thing. Uh, fear of whistleblowing at the BBC allowed Jimmy Savile to abuse, says leaked report. BBC reporter who tried to expose Jimmy Savile's scandal claims he was now being forced out of his job, along with other colleagues on the right side of the argument. A former BBC head of human resources claims he was forced out of his job after he tried to blow the whistle on sexual discrimination and harassment of women. You know, it's just ingrained in the BBC, and hopefully this will help, but I just don't see it. They look after each other in that corporation, don't they? Because they're all riding... They're all riding the gravy train and no one wants to upset that gravy train. And uh, I don't believe that reporting it up what's in your line is going to help anything. Maybe the anonymous one will. I just had a look. I just went through. But um, it's not. They say it's anonymous, but I guarantee they're tracking the IP address. You have to set a password for it, even if you want to re remain anonymous. I don't know how anonymous it is. I hope it is. I hope it is. And I hope that if anyone does file the anonymous reports, that everything is followed up, not just filed out. Oh, that can't be true, that can't be true. You know what these people are like. So, yeah, I hope that works out for them because they need to sort that out, don't they? So what do you think about this then? Do you think this will fix anything within the BBC? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should be more positive and say, I hope it does. I hope it does. That's the way I'll go with it. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because that way, hopefully, you get to see me in another video again soon. Ta-da.